Good morning. My name is Nathan Tabor, and I lead the product team for Kubernetes at AWS. Today, I want to tell you a little bit about our team. We have two charters at AWS. First is to make sure that AWS remains a trusted, reliable, and secure place to run Kubernetes at scale. And second, to engage and support the Kubernetes community. In the next few minutes, I'm going to tell you about some of the investments that AWS makes in open source and why these investments are so critical. I'm also going to share how we see customers in China and around the world using Kubernetes to scale and innovate faster than ever before. But first, I want to tell you a little bit about sustainability. AWS has committed to ongoing support for open source, and sustainability is our guiding principle. Sustainable open source projects have the resources and that they need to maintain healthy code and healthy communities. Our investments are both big and small in this space, from small bucks fixes up, upstream and code reviews to supporting major financial and organizational initiatives. For example, to ensure sustainability, AWS has pledged three million US dollars to the CNCF in cloud credits and dedicated engineering resources. These resources help run the Kubernetes projects and many other CNCF projects. And this investment directly led to us helping the CNCF to create registry.cates.io, which distributes hosting for Kubernetes and CNCF images across the cloud providers to improve speed and performance for image pulls. This also significantly lowers the egress bandwidth and storage costs for the CNCF and makes it sustainable for a CNCF project to continue to deliver images to all customers. In addition to helping the Kubernetes project sustainably serve image traffic, registry.cates.io is critical in ensuring that the CNCF and Kubernetes project containers can be quickly pulled and used by customers anywhere in the world. This is more important than ever because Kubernetes is a global platform. And with a common standard, it allows you to scale your applications and your business to customers anywhere. One of the companies that's using Kubernetes to scale across the world is MobVista. MobVista has used Kubernetes to scale to reach over 251 regions and 3.5 billion active devices around the world. Using Kubernetes, MobVista um, is able to run across eight cloud regions simultaneously with over 10,000 nodes in production. And Kubernetes is not just helping customers scale globally, it's also helping them accelerate innovation in data analytics and machine learning. For example, OPPO, they built a big data platform on Kubernetes to store and analyze the massive data that's generated by hundreds of millions of users every day. This requires a robust and scalable system to support real-time processing of terabytes of data at low cost using Flink. Kubernetes and AWS makes this possible for OPPO. Using Kubernetes native technologies, including the open source Carpenter Autoscaler, OPPO can reduce cost and ensure resilience for the big data platform. Enabling faster innovation at global scale has been a hallmark of why Kubernetes has become so critical. I want to tell you a little about some of my observations for the future of Kubernetes. First, where you run Kubernetes matters. So Kubernetes can help improve the availability, resilience, and performance of an application. But it has not abstracted the criticality of the hardware, the network, and the storage infrastructure. These things matter a lot. Instead, what Kubernetes does is it gives you more choice and allows you to choose the best of the infrastructure around where you run your workloads. And it lets you take an app that was previously locked to a data center and scale it across multiple global cloud regions. Successful teams will leverage this portability to improve performance, ensure resiliency, and reduce costs. Second, scaling must become more intelligent. Many customers still treat the cloud like a data center, but it's not. There's a huge opportunity for tooling to evolve. Application autoscaling projects like Kata, along with an existing exciting set of startup companies, are making it easier to scale based on key metrics. At AWS, we open source the Carpenter project, which dynamically and automatically selects the best nodes to run applications. This is growing quickly, and we invite anyone in the community to contribute both to the project and in building cloud providers. Third, to be successful with Kubernetes requires a change in philosophy. 
Kubernetes is not just another technology that you run inside of your company. It requires a mindset change to be successful, to move from static provisioning to dynamic resource allocation, and it lets you truly adopt the principles of the cloud. I encourage you to think about this as you plan for adoption. It's a powerful tool, and to leverage it, you want to make sure that you change the culture and your attitude towards how you provision resources and how applications can scale. Shishini, it's been an honor to speak with you.